At Metro by T-Mobile, we're giving you more. Right now, new and existing customers can get a free Samsung Galaxy tablet. Enjoy high-speed data on your tablet for just 15 bucks a month when you add to an existing line. That's how Metro gives you more. More streaming and more connecting to the ones you love. With a free Samsung Galaxy tablet. Only at Metro. With rebate after three months of service, plus tax limited time offer in-store only. Not available in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Miami-Dade. See store for details. If you have your books, you'll be able to follow along. If not, that's okay. I will design the class for the next three months that even if you have not read, you will still be able to get some value. You just won't be able to add value. If you are someone who can add value and you have read, you will be blessed greatly for it. All right. So sorry about all of that technical difficulties. Let us move forward in the fastest, quickest, most harmonious way to get this done. All right, come on, come on, sit down. I'm going to pass it to Tempest real quick and she'll tell you some cleaning or some housekeeping things real quick, and then we'll immediately get started. Hi, everyone. I will send everyone a copy of the reading schedule. For the most part, we are going over Think and Grow Rich one chapter at a time. <laughs> we meet every Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We do have a line out chat group. You're more than welcome to join. If you would like to join, let us know. We'll add you. We talk about the book. We talk about things during the week. Um, let one of us know. We'll be happy to send you instructions on how to download the app and how to join us. But for the most part, we are here to help you. One chapter at a time, I will... Um, post a link, a Dropbox link, so everyone can download the reading schedule, so everyone will know what's going on. And if you have any issues, let us know. Thanks for being here. Great. Now, let's get started. This is going to be an open Q&A form, so to speak. You're going to be able to ask questions and go. So at this point, uh, speak all at once or don't speak all at once. What do you know about Think and Grow Rich thus far? Anybody. Doesn't matter. In front of me or online. It's a very vocal class. I will start off. It Go ahead. Was, um, it, oh. Go ahead. That's okay. Keep going. Keep going. Go ahead. It was written by... Napoleon Hill, and I think that he was either, he either shadowed, sh shadowed Andrew Carnegie, and Carnegie was the, um, he was mentored by, oh God, he built the railroad, no, the oil industry. The gentleman that built the oil industry, who was m mega rich, and that gentleman went through a lot of losses and struggles, and Andrew Carnegie, I think it was Andrew Carnegie that shadowed him, or he was Andrew Carnegie, but Napoleon Hill was brought into it because he was writing the, the memoirs or was writing the book based on what, what this, Napoleon Hill was writing the book based on what Andrew Carnegie knew on how to get rich. Good. And he talked about a secret that he had, and, that, and they give a list of so many millionaires and extremely successful people who found this secret and went by it and they grew rich. Good, good. So I like that you mentioned the secret. I mean, everything you said is just fine. So good job for you. I love your, your hair piece you got on. Yes, I love it. Love it very much. It looks just so Wakanda radiant. Forever. I appreciate it. That's it. Wakanda kind of forever. Okay, great. Brian, you were going to say something. I think, think it was me. Yes. Can I chime in? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. So, Antonio, thank you. Great subject. Carmela, you're spot on. It's an interesting story because Dale Carnegie had been wanting to write this book for a long time and interviewed a number of people. However, uh, what he, the only thing that Dale Carnegie would promise to do, who was a steel magnet, was he promised to write a letter of introduction to, the, to, to his colleagues, the most famous and wealthiest people in the country. And he wanted them to be interviewed so that they could share their secrets of success. 
And so everyone that uh, that had that Dale Carnegie had approached expressed interest, but because this was a commission only deal, everyone passed on it. And so what happened was there was a fellow who took Dale Carnegie up on his offer, took those letters of endorsements, and traveled across country on his own dime and introduced every one of these, uh, some folks refer to them as, as robber barons, some folks refer to them as the founding fathers, uh, uh, but what, what, what he did was he traveled across the country on his own dime and interviewed all of these men and their secrets of success, their stories uh, became what is now known as Think and Grow Rich. Absolutely. Absolutely. Spot on. Carmela, good job. Uh, obviously, Mark, good job. Appreciate you there. And of course, Mark knows his information, so it's not a correction. He, he's meaning Andrew, not, you know, not, not, not Dale. Dale will come later, I'm right? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. He does it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He does it. He does it. Does it. The still, there it is. Yeah. Brian, go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Uh, powerful Carmela. Mark, you, you kills it every time. Every uh, time. Yeah, every time. But I wanted to say, and I kind of feel like, well, let me let my windows up so you guys don't hear, hear the wind. I kind of feel like I have, I have a slight advantage over people who actually read books is because I'm an audio book person. And in this particular audio book, you get the editor's quotes. And with the editor's quotes, it goes in a deeper detail about each chapter of the book. And it gives you a broader overview of the book. And what I wanted to say about, because your, your general question was, what do you know about Think and Grow Rich? And just in listening to the editor's notes, this time, not, not, not the previous times I listened to it, because I kind of ignored them, but this time I actually paid attention and I was present. And I actively listened to it. And I realized that 80% of the people that we adore and that we worship that's successful, they apply the secret. So the secret is what will get you your success. It's applying the secret that will get you your success. I, I just realized, and I'm, I'm a preacher, and I'm going to put my hands up. I'm at a stop sign, so I'm going to put my hands up and say this. Think and grow rich is your next Bible. And in order to obtain anything that you want in life, of any level of success, no matter what your level of success is, that's your level. But any level of success, in order to obtain it, you're going to have to become this Bible. And you're going to have to think and grow rich. Because without this secret, you will never get where you're trying to get. No matter how hard you work, you still need this secret. It took this guy 20 years to write this book. And we get upset after 20 minutes of not even getting our dreams because we put in the work. But you got to know this secret and you got to apply this secret. Okay, good, good, good. So I'm going to stop you right there. I appreciate you. There's a, again, all of you are spot on. There, that's, there is no wrong answer. I just wanted to set the stage because we're going to go deep in awareness. We're going to go deep in awareness. So let's build a skeleton real quick. If I had to sum up uh, Think and Grow Rich in one sentence, which is quite difficult, but if I had to sum up Think and Grow Rich, if I had, yeah, you, you can invite other people in the university, but you can't invite people outside to leave. If I had to sum up Think and Grow Rich in one sentence, it would be whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. This is probably at the moment you all start taking notes. Do please understand. Well, let me repeat this here before I slap you in the face with some truth. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. If I had to sum it up in one sentence, I could probably do better, but I am a very practical person. Without poetry, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Am I being hurt? I need you all to sit that into your subconscious because while you're hearing me, you're not hearing me, okay? The difference between 
the difference between knowing what to do and doing what to do, two different things. Two different things. The difference between knowing what to do and doing what to do are two different things. Had you actually believed, and some of you may not apply here, but most of you will. If you actually believe in what I just said, whatever the mind can conceive, believe, it can achieve. Had you believed that, you'd have every last one of your dreams. You'd have every last one of them. Your harvest proves your belief. This is the way you start writing down. Okay? Your harvest shows me your belief system. Your harvest is simply what your mind has thought. That's it. And in order for you to get something in the physical world, you had to think it first. But you didn't just have to think it. You had to think it with belief. We're going we're gonna to define what belief is and emotions and all that stuff later. But I just want to get you that this, this thing. There are 13 principles in Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill says that there's a secret there. And if you're ready for the secret, it will meet you. And I want to tell you the same thing. If you're ready for the secret, it will meet you. Let's go to the 13 principles real quick. I'm just going to give you the structure. Right now, I'm speaking to all personality types. Principle number one, a burning desire. Principle number one, a burning desire. Now, we're going to go to principle number two. And we're going to go way, well, we're already past the first chapter right now. But we're going to go back to the first chapter. But take this. Principle number two, faith. And he's going to define what faith is, and we're going to define it. Principle number three, kills everyone. Auto suggestion. Kills everyone. It just, it just absolutely slaughters everyone. Principle number four, specialized knowledge. You do not get rich off general knowledge. You get rich off specialized knowledge. Principle number five, imagination. Principle number six, organized planning. Principle number seven, decision. If you are a procrastinator, you automatically don't do principle number seven. You automatically don't do principle number one. You automatically don't do principle number two. You automatically fail at principle number three, and you automatically suck at four and five. If you are a procrastinator, you fail at these first seven. Now, let's pause for a moment. I want all of you to do introspection and admit to yourself if you are a procrastinator. If you are a procrastinator, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, you, 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 you are sub-average at it. Don't do me like that. I understand, I understand. I'm coming for the throat already, okay? You're sub-average. My job, my, my, my goal here, I should say, is to go deeper in your awareness. I say it again. The part of the brain that knows what to do and does what to do are two different parts of the brain. Let's pause real quick on one through seven and let's just, and I'm not going to talk that much during this class. This class, you're going to talk a lot. I just have to talk a lot right now. Let's, let's imagine this if we will. You can be high in intellect and low in awareness. As a matter of fact, with the, with the capitalistic system we have, those who are High in awareness and low in intellect make the most money. With the school system piping you from generalized knowledge to generalized knowledge, you have to go to grad school just to start focusing on specialized knowledge. But by that time, you have $100,000 in student debt. The, the, the pipeline that we're in promotes general knowledge and then pays people like me, Mark, uh, Phil and Sue, lots of money, Tempest, for specialized knowledge. I happen to be someone that's high in intellect and awareness, but you don't need to be high in intellect. Let me give you an example. My man Floyd Mayweather. None of you are waiting for the next out loud, out loud reading of a book from Floyd Mayweather. None of you are waiting for his masterpiece book or movie. What is it? What is it? Is it uh, Scor Scor the, the great? I always mess Martin up his name. That, that, how you knew I was going to do that? Martin Scorsese. She knew. Okay, good. He is clearly gifted, isn't he? He's clear. He makes the greatest movies. He really does. 
You're not expecting that from Floyd Mayweather. But he has more money than all of us combined. 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 Mark Davenport is on a call. At least I think he's on a call. I can't see my screen. I'm on the phone. Mark Davenport has raised over $500 million in startup capital. Mark Davenport is a genius. Floyd Mayweather has done more than $500 million in startup capital for himself. LeBron James is the first NBA player ever to reach a billion dollars in salary. A billion dollars in NBA salary. Not as outside investments. That's not intellect, that's awareness. <clears throat> it's, it's knowing what to do when you're in a meeting and it's knowing what to do when you wake up. Mm, wow. It's knowing how to let go of problems that bother you. It's, know, it's knowing how to forgive. All that stuff. If you are a procrastinator, if you struggle with forgiveness... Seven through one, you don't do well. Number eight, persistence. Persistence. Persistence, okay? Number nine, power of the mastermind. If you've ever seen me and my team work and we have fun, we're clearly not just friends, we are a mastermind group. Number 10, enthusiasm. And I have no help aids in front of me. Uh, these are my notes that I've taken since 2018. I mean, excuse me, 2008. Number 10 was enthusiasm. Number 11, the power of the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind. The subconscious mind. Number 12, the use of your brain. I wish I had somebody right there. Number 13, the sixth sense. Now, we're going to go way past that. We're, we're going to go way past that. And, of course, he's, he gives you 30, 30 rules of fair year leadership, all sorts of stuff like that. Now, it doesn't matter which version of Think and Grow Rich you have. I read another version. I teach from the 21st century landmark version. So if I say something that's not in your book, don't worry about it. We're all going to talk about it, okay? Right now, if you have this version, I'll see if I can hold it up for you. You don't have to have this version. I believe this version, is this a version online that you posted? Is this the same one? Okay, the audio link we posted online is this version, I believe. But you don't need this version. We're going to talk about this stuff, okay? Right now, I'm done talking just yet. Let's have an open dialogue about what I'm about to read. There is no, on page, it's not even a page. It's not even an actual page. It is Roman numeral eight and the author's preface to the original edition. He surmises from the reading thing or rich, there's no such thing as something for nothing. I'm going to keep reading a few highlights. If you're ready for what Brian called the secret, <clears throat> what Mark pointed out, if you're ready for it, if you're ready to capture what you need in this book, you already have the first part of it in your possession. The second part would jump out at you only if you're ready. Okay, now, <clears throat> somewhere as you read, or actually, I'm sorry, as a final word for preparation of this book, I want to offer you one brief suggestion that may provide a clue to recognizing the Carnegie secret. It is this, all achievement, you should write this down, all achievement, all earned riches, have their beginning in an idea. All achievement, all riches have their beginning in an idea. Everybody cool with that? All right, get ready to talk. <clears throat> One of the, there was truly thoughts are things and powerful things at that. When mixed with purpose, persistent, and a burning desire for their translation into riches and material objects. Thoughts are things. Let's open up for discussion. 
Who among you believes that thoughts are things or believes that thoughts are not things? Go. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, I believe that thoughts are things because where you are, whether you believe it or not, where you are, you thought it. Um, I thought about retiring for years. And when I finally put some emotion behind it, I created it. Antonio teaches us all the time that thoughts plus emotion equal creation. So whatever you think and you have an emotion behind that thought, it will be created. Whether good, whether you think it's good or whether you think it's bad. Thoughts plus emotion to me equal creation. So I think thoughts are things. Okay. Give me someone else. Thoughts are things. Do you agree or disagree? It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong answer. Thoughts okay. Are okay, go ahead, John, and then whoever was after that person. Go ahead, John. Uh, I agree. I believe thoughts are things. I mean, how else would you create anything if you didn't have some thoughts and put them in the things? That's fair. That's fair, practical. John is a computer programmer. That was straight line thinking, wasn't it? That, that, that was absolutely fair. Appreciate you, John. Was that Grace Holden? That was Grace Holden. Superstar, wealth creator, no champion builder. I'm just, Wait a minute, I'm about my man Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about my man Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a wealth strategist. Hey, okay, yes. so yeah, thoughts are things. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry, I had to move around, but as a matter no. of fact, your thought is connected to your heart, which is what Grace was referring to that you talk about. That your heart mm -hmm. is your emotion. So thoughts are things. So I'm doing an experiment right now in a class that I'm in called Intuitive Intelligence. And we've spoken wow. about this already. And the way it works is um, one of the experiments is to live as if. So if you know you want to be a billionaire, because that's where Antonio's heading, we're heading in that direction. You know you want to be a billionaire. The way you, make, you manifest that outside of just doing the work of it, of course, is you think it. And so the live as if experiment is, if that's what you're going to do, dress like it, act like it, be like it, talk like it, do like it. And so someone had to a party and said, live as if you were five years later. Every single person that came to that party, whether they wanted to be married, they wanted to be a millionaire, they wanted to be whatever, they were that within that five-year period. God, because they right. came and they lived as if. So that proves that when you think it and you're, you're using your, your whole emotion, which is your heart brain, then it is a reality. So absolutely, yes, thoughts are things. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I shall not disagree with that at all. Let's, here's, here's what's gonna be fun about this, and you're gonna see, I have, a, I have a strategic way of thinking. I guide people to a place that I want them to be at, and then I take the rug from underneath them. I'm getting ready to take the rug from underneath you in a little bit, okay? Okay, once you think you got your feet saved, I'm gonna snatch the rug, and make you fall a little bit. Go ahead. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Thoughts create things. So you have to have the thought and you have to have the emotion to go with that thought. And it has to connect to that which is the ether, the, uh, the source. That So it's almost like your thought and the emotion you put to it go and throw out a transmitter that says, this is what I want. And then you have your visualization. So in your mind, because your mind doesn't know what's real or not real, sees it as being real and creates the reality of it. So thoughts create reality. Absolutely correct. Not going to disagree with that. Uh, Renee is already quoting pages, uh, quoting things from the page. We're going to do. We're going to definitely do that as well. Does anybody disagree with? Anything that's was said so, thus far, this is a safe place. You're more than welcome to disagree. Anybody? Nobody. All right. This uh, is wait, what wait, I... Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. I do. I have, so although you guys heard me talk about thoughts are things, I have a whole nother caveat to that. And what I'm, what, and when I was speaking, I was talking about what we manifest. Um, and so you can manifest things without having a thought and I know this is going to get a little deep, but you can manifest things without having a thought because what we, what, what we want and what we're looking for, it already exists. It's actually already in the realm. It's there already because the plan's already made for us. So whether you think it or not, 
it's still there. It's whether you manifest it. So that's my other caveat to it. But I, that's not the question. You know, he wasn't asking that question, but I just wanted to make sure I threw that in. No, yeah, you're right. And we're definitely going there. This is, this, um, we're gonna, this is going to be so high up. I taught this class last year, so I have all the audio from that as well. And, but I have people like Mark Grace, Phil Sue, Tempest, high level, all, everyone's high level awareness. Right now we're in low level of awareness stuff. This is, this is low level of awareness. If, if awareness had levels, this would be level one we're talking about, okay? This would be level one. Someone read me, so let me read Phil's comment real quick. Flesh and dwelt among us. All right, so let, you know what? Let's, we get ready to tackle that here in a little bit. Phil is absolutely correct. Now, does anyone disagree with anything? Even Grace Holden, that wouldn't even disagree, man. She was adding more meat to the bones. A anybody? Now let's snatch the rug on you. But you didn't ask for that molestation. Oh, well, y'all thought I was going to not be Antonio Smith? Is that what y'all thought? Okay. You didn't ask for the molestation. You didn't ask for that rape at four. Okay, now, if you don't know me, uh, if you don't know my story, I'm not being insensitive. I was molested and raped at six all the way to nine and ten. Okay? I don't even remember past nine and ten. I, I can't remember which, which one it actually was. I just know when it started. Okay? So I'm not being insensitive. I qualify to bring this subject up. Everybody got me? Okay, so don't throw stones at me. And I ain't the only one. If you ain't read the book Dirty, free plug, by Grace Holden, Ugh, I, just, I don't even know what to tell you. you. Just read it gently. You're gonna need some wine after every chapter. Okay, you, you really are. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. So we can talk about this. If we now, listen, we just went thoughts of things, thoughts of creation, man, manifestation. No, no, you everything in this world is created, and therefore that rape was created. That molestation was already created, and we walked into it. Now, before I unmuddy the waters, okay, look like Tempest got something. Okay, Carmela has something to say. Before I unmuddy the waters, okay. come on, we got Carmela, then Renee. Go ahead, just get some feedback right now. I ain't, I haven't brought anything up, but a new rug that we got to deal with now. Go ahead, Carmela. Carmela's a therapist, by the way. So when I was treating rape, um, excuse me, sex offenders. Each one said they thought on what they did for days, weeks, and months That's prior right. to even running into, most of them, prior to even running into their um, victim. Some of them knew their victim, and they would ruminate on it, think on it, and think on it, and think on it, even when they were away from the victim. So when they came into the right circumstance, with the victim, it was just a matter of acting out their thought, bringing their thought to life. So it was still a thought that no, was no, okay. Yeah, okay, it was a thought by the perpetrator, the primary aggressor. In psychology, that would be primary aggressor, the person yes. who brings the aggression. Was it manifested by the victim? I would say let's, no. Let's make the... Okay, we got a no for all right. See, now we got some disagreements. Okay, I knew it was gonna get okay. Now we got some disagreements. Now we can have a real conversation. I, 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 <laughs> okay. I, I see it as though there's someone who manifests this situation that person that's thinking about it for days and days and days, and then he goes forward and finds the right supposed victim. A victim has to be in the same energy wavelength where this person is looking for, what that person is looking for to have that experience. All right, we're we going somewhere. Not thinking as a grown-up, but maybe in the subconscious mind, there's something that says, I am a victim. All right. I need to experience that. So they hook up. That's how All I right. Yeah. All right, we got, we got, now we get to have a conversation. We get to have a conversation because a thought must right now we're saying a thought must have a receiver. This is 
had I not brought up rape molestation, have I not have had I not brought up an emotionally charged subject? This is very emotionally charged. Have I not brought this up? You would have said, and you and I will quote you the imaginary use. You would have said, well, a thought goes out and it finds what matches its frequency, and then it comes back to that thing and that thing. Right, you, you get it. You would have said it. And if you think uh, Carmela's word ruminated, and so this is a lot of emotion. Okay, this is premeditated emotion over and over compacted over and over and over and then emotion manifests itself into matter because that's what that energy of emotion manifests in matter or something had i not brought up emotionally charged subject all of y'all would have been very comfortable with saying it goes out and it finds what it's looking for and what matches the frequency and then boom but now it's a bit more difficult isn't it Okay, go ahead, Renee. You wanted to say something. Okay. I don't agree that um, the victim manifested it. Having been molested at a very young age, I don't think I brought that on myself, but it's a matter of what do I think about what happened afterwards? What do I do with it? I don't believe that God put me in that situation for me not to bring me through a different thought process for something else to come out of it, but I don't think I manifested it. Fair, fair enough. I'm not, hey. We're, here's, there's a name for this argument that I'm presenting to us right now. It's called nature versus nurture. Okay. We're, I'm not going to solve this argument today. We've been arguing about nature versus nurture way longer than what I got here, way longer than what I'm at. Do you, I need all of you to be clear. I am not going to solve just because I'm not calling it nature versus nurture. I'm not going to solve it as much as you understand. But we, there are some fundamental understandings, fundamental meaning basic, rudimentary. There are some basics of thoughts and what you call victims, we need to understand before we even move forward. Whether you like that or not, we need to understand that moving forward. But let's talk about it more. Let's talk about more. Renee says, I don't think I did that when I was, I didn't manifest that. But then she wisely said, but my response to it, I was able to control. Let's clap for Renee. That's, that's, that's good. That's very good. That's, it's very good that she has a, the, a, that's not intellect. Now, if you're not practicing that, Renee, that's just intellect. But she seems to have gotten over her molestation. Get it? Uh, Grace to myself, and I don't even know anybody else who's been molested, but I know all three of us. Now, we've all, in awareness, got over it. Is it, is it everybody processing that information? What caused it? Because do we live in a world that's not alive? Or do we live in a world that responds to thoughts from all people? It's a fair question. You don't have to like dealing with it, but in order to understand the rest of this book, I got to hit you. I told you I was going to pull the rug from under you. Okay. Oh, I'm, I, she said I'm breaking up real bad. All right. Let's see. Am I breaking up? For, okay. Renee, did I break up for you? Okay. PJ said no. Okay. Might be on your end, Carmel. Carol, did I break up for you? No. Okay. Good. Okay. Might be on your end. Okay. Now, okay. Thank you, Phil. When I'm, I'm just, I'm, when I'm stretching your awareness right now. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. So let's go back to the victim. Let's make the victim 30. Let's right now, before we deal with the kids, and that's going to kill us all, let's make the victim 30. Okay? Did the 30-year-old rape victim, male or female, all, of course, all of you are thinking probably female, did they attract did they manifest with their thoughts the rape they did not deserve? It's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Okay. M.O.D. says yes. Who else? So I let everything. <laughs> Where's Grace at? Where's Grace holding? <laughs> okay. All right. I we don't even comment. have. Okay. Go with your comment. Phil says maybe. Ooh. 
And I'm here too, by the way. Uh, okay, yeah, she's in. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Carmela. Okay. Okay, so a study I did in grad school, and then it was proven more as I picked up. People who were molested and raped as children tend to have had it happen to them later in life as well or throughout life. Very, oh, this hurts. Very rarely did someone have it happen once, only one isolated incident, incident as a child. It did occur, but we found that it was rare. And as people started coming in and I started treating rape and molestation victims and even being one myself oh this hurts oh that's, that's why i'm bringing it up though because it hurts now i'm gonna i'm gonna pull the rug from under us again and explain so why i'm doing this but go ahead so we found that later on that victimized spirit it was like and the and the, the perpetrator said i could smell them and i was like what and it was crazy and i hate to say i'm having a problem saying it i will admit i'm having a problem saying it but it was like they could smell them they said that they weren't going to be the ones to fight then i've also interviewed and talked to ones that fought it off like crazy and some of them were like close to death and they said i was determined it was not going to happen and so in talking to both was crazy because as much as I hate to say it and I'm trying not to maybe the thought it was something there that I don't know I never okay mind. no 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 that's good no 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 no, no. that's that's good that's you know, good I like, I like yeah. to follow up Carmela with um sure yes it's complicated and it's awful but if thoughts lead to feelings, feelings lead to actions, actions lead to results. So the thought, if you were once victimized, as you said, as a child, are going to lead to that victimization feeling we all kind of know about, that low self-esteem, et cetera, et cetera, all that negative stuff. So therefore, sometimes your actions, your results, I mean, your actions after the feelings represent that low self-esteem perpetrators and i supervised the sex offender unit in the probation department for a while and went through that training so i kind of got into the head of the perpetrators as well of course they can pick that up any predator can pick up the scent of a victim in the sense because there's certain behaviors demonstrated not so much that the victim wants this, welcoming this, and is thinking, oh, yes, I can't wait to be molested. But because they are so victimized, and if they haven't gotten help in therapy and treatment, they don't know how to put across high self-esteem and strength and assertiveness that, hey, don't even come this way with that. So then, so to get the result of being strong and not, attracting a perpetrator you just simply have to learn to have the high self-esteem and love yourself and get rid of all that old baggage so i i don't really want to say the victim is thinking it into being but i believe the victim's low self-esteem and their way of acting out in the world because of what has happened to them does make them a target for the perpetrator it hey, makes sense. I sure appreciate you, PJ. Makes sense. JP, PJ, it makes sense. Now watch this here. Let's see. Evo D, you got your hand up. I'm going to call on you, and I'm going to do this in this order. Then I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. I wanted to call on Grace and Phil, Grace Holden and Phil, but I'm going to save them. After I tell you why I'm doing this, I'm going to let them put their high level of awareness. I'm going to call on Grace, Phil, and Tempest. I'm going to let them put on their high level of awareness of why I'm telling you why I'm doing what I'm doing. Eva D, go ahead. Yeah, um, I wanted to add that if thoughts are things and um, 
and your your vibration and all this so basically whether it's a good thought or it's a bad thought it's still emanating some sort of vibration so even uh when you ask somebody that's 30 did they attract their um molester um even if they feared being molested they would have attracted their molester because you know, if the universe doesn't understand jokes, it doesn't understand sarcasm or anything. It just says yes to everything that you put out there. So just thinking about that, that situation or even fearing that situation in any way, shape or form um, would attract that kind of situation to an individual because uh, just, just because of that energy of you attract whatever it is that like attracts like. So. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's 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 very good for the not only does like attract like uh, there's a reason why we say opposites attract, but that's still like attracting like I'm gonna break this down and then I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it. And I'm gonna call on in this order. Grace Holden, Phil Sorrentino, Tempest Smith. All right. Like attracts like all of you got that intellectually. If you haven't been, if you don't understand, I've exposed most of you that you can't control your emotions and you can't make a decision. Okay. You were even having a hard time choosing which is which. And those who find riches do not struggle with thoughts, do not struggle with which emotion they're going to carry. I need all of you to understand this conversation. I'm not making up this conversation. And you'll get my teaching style as we move forward. I am on script. Listen to what I read. Truly thoughts are things and powerful things at that. When mixed with purpose, persistence, and a burning desire for that, which translates into riches and many other, I mean, other material objects. We've been talking about this one paragraph. It's probably the one thing we're going to talk about for most of this conversation. And I need all of you to understand that you're having a hard time understanding that riches don't have to be riches as you define them. Riches to a sociopath is not riches to an empath. Riches to a rapist is a lot of rape victims. Those are riches. You don't have to like that. But though that is an abundance of what they are, let me read. Okay, she, Deanna has a question. I, I get you. That is an abundance of riches and other material objects. Some of you right now have a lot of poison in your life, and you have no idea that those are riches. You're just rich in poverty. Everybody hear me and hear me very well. You don't have lack. You have an abundance of poverty. There is no such thing as lack. There is no such thing as lack. You've never not, double negative, you've never not received what you wanted. If you're not writing down, you should be. You've never not received what you wanted. The things that you're calling lack in your life no, it is an abundance of what you truly feel. It is an abundance of fear. It is an abundance of nothing. It is an abundance of hurt. It's not that you lack love. You have an abundance of abuse. Somebody not hear me. All right, I'm going to read this again. Surely, y'all, like by now, y'all don't follow me long enough to know that I wouldn't just fit up here and get up here and just read a little bit. Okay? Truly, thoughts are things. I am, my thesis that I did not expose to you, I'm now exposing to you, was to prove to you that thoughts are things. They only become things when you mix them with purpose, persistence, and a burning desire. All of you should be writing that down. Every bit of material thing that you have in your life, whether it be non-material 
or physical material. Same thing. It came from a thought that you mixed with purpose, persistence, and a burning desire. If you have a marital problem, it's not your husband or wife's fault. It is you, ladies and gentlemen. There's no such thing as marital problems. There are only character issues that bubble up in a relationship. If you have marital problems, you have a you problem. You have an awareness and a comfortable mindset that says, I expect my marriage to be this way. And you mixed it with purpose persistence and a burning desire well i would never hurt me no you wouldn't hurt you on purpose <laughs> you wouldn't hurt you on purpose but what you did is since you said you write about him your subconscious won't let you be wrong i'm over here jumping right? <laughs> yes. That's exactly yes. the case. That's exactly the case. Go ahead, Grace. You can say something. Because I was going to let you say something. You, I was going to let you, Phil, and Tip and say something. That's why I'm doing that. Yeah, go ahead. Well, let me just say this. When I wrote the book Dirty, and I, so, like, I have so much molestation, rape, bullying, sex trafficking, abuse, stabbed in four places. I have so many things that happened to me. But with purpose, persistence, all of those things is why I came out. People say, why don't you talk about it as if it's a problem? Because I had to speak. I didn't say I didn't go through some stuff. I didn't say I didn't go through, you know, being crazy things, suicidal things and all that. But I had to purpose and persistently make sure that I have my sanity and come out on the other side. So my heart had to get bigger than my problem. What? My heart Wait a minute now. Like <laughs> and that's why forgiveness became so critical for me or I was going to die with the quote of the junk on me and go to my grave with it. Oh, my heart had to get bigger than my problem. Way bigger. Okay, so okay. All I'm saying is it's, I'm not giving it an easy credence. I'm telling you it is exactly those three things that, and, and probably mixed with a bunch of everything else that goes with that that had to pull me out on the other side. Okay, thank you very much, Grace. Thank you very much. I'm not even going to follow that. Phil, jump on in there. Make, make sure he's not, okay good i'm on there you go phil go ahead give us some of that genius you got evil is lived spelled backwards the devil is lived spelled backwards race car is race car spelled backwards <laughs> fair enough <laughs> fair enough so for everything, there's a yin and a yang, and you get to yep. choose what you want to focus on. Yep. That was the thing about the secret. They didn't talk about the yang of the yin. They talked about just think about it, it'll come. But yep. when you put it out in the universe, you naturally set up a, uh, an opposite that you better Must. recognize and break through to get to where you're going. That's right. Phil just brought up the most important thing thus far. Keep going, Phil. See, I believe when your soul manifests itself at this particular time in the time continuum, it knows pretty much what kind of a life it's choosing. So some soul, souls chose to be a starving kid in Ethiopia because they knew that they would learn what a starving kid in Ethiopia learned, so they put themselves in that position to learn those lessons. And then you have to go live the life to learn the lessons that you chose to live. He's right. What Phil just brought up was, thank you very much, Phil. What Phil just brought up was called the law of opposites. It's the one thing, and he already mentioned it, so I'm just kind of piggybacking off of him. It's, it's the one thing the, the book and the movie The Secret left out, the law of opposites. You cannot experience, give me, give me something, it doesn't matter. Give me, give me any experience one of you want to, okay, every, many of you want to be a millionaire, okay? Until you experience poverty, you cannot experience a millionaire. You don't have to like that. It is the yin and yang that Phil pointed out. 
There is no such thing as bad, ladies and gentlemen. Bad does not exist. It's just energy. Once it goes to your frame of reference, that's a psychological term, your viewpoint, uh, colloquialism, once it goes through your subconscious, then you make it bad. It's just energy. It, that's it. It is just information coming at your direction. But then once it gets to your low self-esteem, you make it match your awareness. None of you have ever had a bad day into, in your life. None of you have ever had a bad day into your life until you said, this information, I deem it bad. I will now match what I deem. Okay, get ready, Tempest. Coming your way. This is hard for you to accept. If you've never... Okay, let, let me... I, I, I really set you up. But, I, but in fairness, I told all of you I was setting you up. I told you I have a style of teaching, which and I made all of you agree. I did. I led. If I was in court, the, the other lawyer would say, objection, he's leading a witness. I let you all. I did. I let you all. You all agreed. Then I snatched the rug brought up an emotionally charged subject that none of you can possibly agree with only for me to show you that your thoughts don't run this world. Your thoughts backed by emotion create your world. See, once I brought up an emotionally charged subject, your emotions overrode your thoughts. There's a game I love to play. If you follow me long enough, you will see me do this. I'm going to do it again. And you're still going to fail. I say it every time, right? I say it every time. I'm going to do this and you're going to fail. All of you will be a millionaire. It's like, I didn't fail. I'm good. In the next three minutes. See what happened? You see it? You see what happened? See, you see, two thoughts popped up at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, you have this, you have this big thought that you call your conscious thought, but then there's your auto suggestion. And we're going to talk about that as we dive deeper into this. When I put a time limit on you, your real thought about being a millionaire popped up. Antonio. Yes, sir. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pam. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. But in the continuum of thoughts equal feelings, which you're calling emotions, which take over. But before you get to actions, you can change that thought that led to that feeling and change the next part in the continuum, which is the action you will take, which will give you a different result. So You're absolutely you, correct. You can stop that continuum from going negative or however you want to say and right. turn it around and make it be what you want it to be by changing your thought. So it's not put in stone that once nope. you have a thought, you get a certain thing because like you said, with all that persistence and passion and whatever, it has to be added to it. But if you stop it in that continuum, you can change it. That's and right. And how do you stop it? That's how we renew our mind. That's what being transformed and renewing our mind is all about. It's stopping a particular thought that's not getting us the result we want and turning it around and to get the result we want. And it's a process. Absolutely correct. A complicated Absolutely correct. Process. And that's as far as <laughs> well. <you know. laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a simplify the process by by telling you she's right. JP is completely right, but it's the emotion that leads to the action. How many of you want to kill your boss at work? Come on, don't lie. It's something you felt for a little bit, <laughs> maybe five seconds, and then guess what you did? You put no more emotion behind it. Therefore, you didn't kill your boss. That was you having a thought and then reversing it. I'll prove it to you this way. Because somebody, somebody, somebody went, no, I'm too saved for that. I don't. <laughs> and it's always, it's always, it's always the folk deeply rooted in religion that have a hard problem with this. See, JP has balanced her religion with her awareness. That's why she was able to say what she just said. What she just said was you can renew your mind. You, you can stop this thought and reverse it. You can. 
but the emotion plants the seed into the ground and you can't reverse that. You put poison into the ground, no matter how much you unpray that poison, you will reap poison. No matter how much you unpray it. Now, the trick is, while renewing your mind, I got you, PJ. But the trick is to plant so much good around that poison, you barely feel that poison. But you will deal with the consequences. Go ahead. Let me, let me, let me hear you. Do, you. do you know or do you feel I've heard? I don't know if it's true because I haven't researched it enough. But though there is a certain length of period of time before a thought becomes poison in your mind. You've got a, 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 a set amount of time, a time frame where you can change it. It does not take root. Like when they say, don't let bitterness take root. Things yep. can come in, but before it takes root, you can dig it up. Get yep. it out of there and pull that weed out before yeah. it takes yep. root. And I know there's some time frame, but I can't well, remember it's right a, off the top of my head. So let's get rid of the time frame for everyone. It's a very advanced question she asks. It's in your auto suggestion. The truth is there is a time frame for you start making stuff negative. By the time you hit three, all of y'all made stuff negative. You've all reached that time frame. You've all reached it. By the time you hit three, by the time you hit three, maybe even less, you all reached a time frame which you, you believe in negative. You all do it. By the time you all start walking, by the time you all got to kindergarten, you knew how to have a bad day. You knew how to cry when you didn't get a toy. Think, okay? So I want you to, I want, this is where auto-suggestion comes in. So JP's right. This is a very advanced question. You can reverse what you thought if it does not enter into your auto-suggestion. Your auto-suggestion or your subconscious is powering every action that you have. You just don't want, not by, by you, I mean you as in second person plural, the whole people the collective. You don't want to take responsibility for your life. Let me give you an example. Have you noticed changes in the places and spaces around you? More trucks rumbling down the street in your neighborhood or a pop-up experience in a retail storefront? Have you wondered why? You're not alone. Check out Changing Places, a podcast that explores the future of our built environments. Join me, Miriam Sobe, in deep dive conversations with experts who are working to make spaces better amid changing ideas, trends, and social issues. Follow Changing Places wherever you get your podcasts. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. You can upgrade to 5G and get more. More choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones, like the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G. And more 5G coverage on the T-Mobile network. Only at Metro. Most affordable versus major prepaid brands with eligible port, ID, and plan, plus tax. 5G not available in some areas. If congested, users greater than 35 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds, and Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus T-Mobile due to prioritization. Video at 480p. I'm going to give you an example. I'm still calling on YouTube. I'm going to give you an example that all of us can agree with, and I'm going to show you. How many of you have seen a scary movie? It scared the hell out of you, didn't it? You saw a ghost, some post, poltergeist, but the reason why it didn't manifest in your room because you left the movie and you let that go. Am I making some sense to you? You, 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 so you, didn't, you had all the thoughts, but you didn't keep the emotion part. You told you, when you walked out the movie, you said, it's just a movie. And the moment you did that, your auto-suggestion said back to reality. Now, Let's, let me tell you what most of you do. And the reason why I can say this is because I can see your harvest. So you don't get to disagree with your harvest. If you're not living your dreams, but you are highly aware and you're highly intelligent, you just have centimeter, centimeter changes you need to make. But that centimeter change is really ruining the, the manifestation that you want to serve you. Here's how it works. Your auto suggestion or subconscious, but I really like auto suggestion the way think the way Napoleon Hill works it. If I walk up on Talisha right now, okay, and I get mad at her, she's gonna say something that she learned. You know what? I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna walk away. If I walk up on her and slap her, that auto suggestion is gonna come out. 
Now, I, I don't know what y'all, I don't know what's in y'all's suggestion. I dare not say whatever's in her auto suggestion. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I promise you, you unless you say, unless you go, you my head. okay, what I'm trying to get you to understand is you ain't got time to do your learned behavior when I walk up on you and slap you. Whatever is in you is going to come out of you. Now, although that analogy was a bit facetious, it's true across the board. Whatever is truly in you is what manifests out of you. I'll come back to it. Tempest, give us some thoughts. Daniel has had his hand up. Daniel has had a... Well, I got to go to you. Come on. Come on. And we'll get Daniel after this here. I've learned that thoughts become things because what I thought about and what I put so much emotion behind showed up in my life. The problem was what I was thinking wasn't worthy of me. So I created a life that wasn't worthy of me. And I don't get to get mad at my creation because I had poor thoughts and emotions about my life. And I think a lot of us want to blame other people because that's easy. It is easy to blame Antonio for my mess up. But Antonio didn't make me do anything. I thought it. I put so much emotion behind it. And it showed up in my life. So I get thoughts become things and I get some people disagree with that. But if you're disagreeing with that, then you're going to get one of the 12 principles already with the decision. Can you decide that thoughts become things and can you stand your ground no matter what the situation is? Yes, it's tough to talk about rape. Yes, it's tough to talk about molestation. Yes, it's, tough, it's rough to talk about poverty, but it's real. And maybe your life has been, um, maybe your life is a manifestation of your indecision. Maybe you are lukewarm in all areas of your life because you choose to be. I just read a passage out loud from the book, uh, Seed of the Soul, where it talks about there's no outside force that uh, caused you to do the things that you did. You chose to do so. The outside world just guided you on your choices, but the choices ultimately yours not jesus thoughts come things in your life no you chose your thoughts <laughs> you manifested you had your emotions and you created your life it's not it's no one else's fault i can't get mad at antonio because i don't make a million dollars if i don't think i deserve a million dollars i get what i say i'm gonna get and he will get what he say he will get and the harvest will show who, who was thinking what they actually said that they were thinking. Mm. I don't have to talk about it. My life represents it. Right. Okay, Dang, I'm going to come to you in a second. I need to get Diana. Diana, let's go. Can't hear you. All right. Better. Yeah. With everything that we were, we've been talking about, I had a question. <clears throat> you, you've always told us that we, everything in our life is our fault. And I received some new information this evening, so I just wanted to confirm. Whether we think about it or not, even when we vibrate at that frequency, we still create it. That's right. Okay. I'm going to do this from... Take it. There you go. I'm gonna do this from come on. I'm gonna do this from science. A geographical, a ge geological, excuse me, a geological science. So no one disagrees. You, you because see, you're gonna put emotion on what I'm about to say, and if your emotion doesn't match prosperity, you're gonna disagree. Because you have to disagree. Because the story you tell yourself and others must be upheld. The way that PJ asked a brilliant question. Is there a time limit? <clears throat> yes. But y'all, all y'all passed it. Now, being grown is not necessarily a time limit. It is a retraining your subconscious. And you can retrain it. But what all of you need to understand is if you put emotion behind a thought, 
you automatically plant a seed. And if you automatically plant a seed, you automatically schedule a harvest. I'm going to say that again. If you put emotion behind a thought and you put enough emotion behind that thought, you automatically plant a seed. And if you, automa if you plant a seed, you automatically schedule a harvest. Some of you right now, the reason why you have some good days, some bad days, because you're lukewarm, like Tempest said. Therefore, you live in a constant state of, I planted some good seeds, but I got to deal with all these bad seeds I planted. And you never get ahead. How many of you right now constantly feel like I can never get ahead? It is because you never constantly plant the seeds only that get you ahead. Now, yes, emotion, thought plus emotion equals creation. Not emotion plus thought. Thought plus, why not emotion plus thought? That was Brian's question. Because you can't have a, the thoughts come, you're right? You can't have emotion without a thought. If you have the emotion, it's gonna, you're going to think about something. You get it? But when you think about something, if you put enough, emotion is just, emotion is a made up word. Here's how when you know something is an, objective fact when you can't change a single when you, when you can't change a single detail about it that's when it becomes objective a universal law the mere fact that emotion isn't the same word in spanish automatically tells you that emotion is a word we made up emotions the way you're understanding them are subjective vibration is objective it is called the law of motion that is physics I haven't even got to the geological thing yet. That is physics. Everything in this world is in constant motion. Einstein theorized that we're always falling. The only reason we can't tell is because the ground stops us. But if you remove the ground and you remove the background, the sky, the wall, the building, the water, if you remove all that, and if it was just a vacuum-like space, you couldn't tell you're falling. So he postulated we're not falling. There's no such thing as gravity. Okay? That was just a fun fact for you. What I want you to understand is when you put enough emotion, which is just energy, behind a thought, you automatically schedule the harvest of that creation. Now, some of you can't handle this. I'm coming to you in about three minutes, uh, Daniel. Some of you can't handle this. I was calling by his last name. Some of you can't handle this. And the reason you can't handle it is because you're emotionally deciding not to. Because your auto-suggestion has already decided before you took this call whether you were going to listen to me or not. Your burning desire shows up every time you only manifest your burning desire ladies and gentlemen write this down everything in your life you have burnt for if you only have ninety thousand dollars congratulations it is because you burnt for that and you don't have the awareness to get ninety thousand one dollars You can only get your awareness. <laughs> Geological argument that no one can change. No one can change. If that didn't convince you, get ready, Daniel. If that didn't convince you, I'm going to give you a geological argument. It is science. You cannot change this. Deanna asked a question about vibration. Let's go geological and vibration. An earthquake is the vibrating, the violent vibration of two tectonic plates rubbing against one another. That friction creates a vibration strong enough to disrupt and crack the Earth's soil. Okay, this is geologic. This is geology. You don't get to disagree with this. 
we know there are tectonic plates. The only way you get to disagree with this is to say we're all stuck in the matrix and this world doesn't exist and we're all asleep inside some thick liquid. And that's okay. I'll let you do that. Besides having the matrix idea of life, we know there are tectonic plates. We know the earth is constantly in vibration and we know that the earth is spinning around right now at about 37,000 kilometers a second. You can't feel it because we're used to it. Okay, now watch this here. The only buildings that fall during an earthquake are the buildings that match the vibratory frequency of the earthquake. If you don't know, all buildings are constantly vibrating and moving. This is why when they build skyscrapers, they build them to sway. Because if you had something steel and it vibrated, it would crumble. So they build them to sway. When the earthquake matches the vibratory frequency of the building, the building falls. That's geology. Said in a polite, well, in a more poetical way, the reason why your life is destructive is because you keep matching the destructive forces coming at you. Okay? The only way you can have what you call a bad harvest. This is, this is, I'm going to say bad, but from now on, let's just define bad, okay? Something that does not serve you. That's, that's, for the rest of this class, bad equals something that does not serve you, okay? If you like supreme destiny, something that does not super, serve your supreme destiny, okay? That's what bad means. So every time I say bad, that's what I want you to think. I'm just using lower level awareness words so we, everybody can get it, okay? Now, yes. The reason your life is destructive is because you keep matching the destructive forces around you. The reason why you only make $9 an hour is because you keep matching $9 an hour. Jim Rohn says it best. If you grow out to money, it will find you. If you don't grow out to money, if I give you a million dollars, and you only understand $20, it will dwindle down to $20. But you've seen it. You've seen it with all the lottery winners. You see it with the lottery winners. They become something their character or mindset can't handle. Daniel, let's go, Daniel. You might have to unmute him. Got it. Oh, he, he unmuted. Got it. Go ahead. First and foremost, I wanted to tell y'all I walked into some fire. Just got into this. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, man, this is just amazing just hearing everybody and what their thoughts is on this process right here. Um, I was just going to say you were talking about the harvest. You know, as you were just talking about the harvest, Antonio, you were saying that uh, it's automatically uh, planted once you, once you put emotion behind your thought. You know, I was going to say my, you know, some people bury it because they forget to water it. So when you when you mentioned bad, I wanted to piggyback on that and say, go ahead, make sure you water that, make sure you water that, that seed that you plant as opposed to just watering that seed, I mean, planting that seed and not watering it, then you, you pretty much buried it. That's the difference between planting the seed and just burying the seed. And then the second thing was, we were talking about um, captivity. We were talking about, cap yep. uh, not, we were talking about captivity. We didn't use that word, but, that's what we need to do with our thoughts. When a negative thought comes into the mind and negative energy comes into your mind, uh, the Bible talks about putting that thought into captivity, into captivity. So when you, um, to answer your question, I think it was Pamela that asked that question, how do you put it under captivity? You know, you got to think of, look at it from this standpoint. How does a, how does a, a, a convict go to prison? You know, you got to weigh the, you got to weigh out the, you got to weigh out the evidence. You know, is that is the evidence of your thought something that's going to produce for you, or is it something that's going to um, 
do nothing, serve you no purpose. And if once you figure out what that thought is, whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing, that's when you start, you put that thought into captivity. That's all I got. I just wanted to put that in here, put that out there. No, nah, that was put beautiful, that man. All naked. Yeah, that was beautiful. That's beautiful. This is one of those, the, 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 at the last 10 minutes, last 10 to 15 minutes of the class, I always shut it down. I give you my closing thoughts so all of you can tell. I challenge you. I give you something. Until then, this is an open discussion. You will learn faster and better by me facilitating the conversation and forcing you to teach yourself. I'm talking about, go ahead, whoever that is. Sorry about that, Antonio. No, you're uh, fine. Daniel, I want to say too, there's another, there's another level above captivity as well. And that is since you're speaking Bible and you know, that's putting guard at your mind in the first place. You don't even let it get in there where you want to make it captive. When it comes to you, you can say thank you for that information when your subconscious gives you there that you go. Talk. Thank you very much for sharing. I'm not interested. You can go back where you came from. I got a new thought to put there. So you put that guard at your mind and don't even let it get in in the first place. That just a thought. No, that's not just a thought. Those are facts. No, no, no. Those are facts. That's when you have trained your auto suggestion to do that. Those are facts. Those are all facts. Was that Brian get ready to talk? Okay, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, since they brought up the Bible, let me say, um, both, of you, both of you guys are correct, but just let me help you guys with the wording. It's, and when you're speaking spiritual, it's called arresting your thoughts. And the last person that spoke, I wasn't looking at my phone to see exactly who it was. I, wanted, I think it's Carmela that was just speaking. She said, guard your thoughts. What a guard does, anything that's not wanted, a guard arrests it. So you have to arrest your thoughts so your thoughts don't become a seed that's planted. That's it. Not, that, you, again, all facts. Y'all are spitting all facts. I chose today. Now, we're going to do chapter one again next week. I chose today. To, there's a reason why this is three months. We talk about one paragraph, y'all. I don't even know if y'all know how deep we get into this book. There's one doggone paragraph. We talk about one paragraph. Let's review the paragraph for who's that? Who's I that said talking? We're reading the full paragraph. It was only three sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's read it for comprehension. Uh, truly, thoughts are things. And powerful things at that. When mixed with purpose, right there we got, they become powerful when mixed with purpose. And then persistence. And then a burning desire. And when you take an idea, remember I read to you, I said this up, when you take an idea, this is not, I got this idea. And you know what? Ooh, you know what I want to do with this idea? I want to do this with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go tell your family, and they say, you can't do that. You say, man, I ain't trying to hear that. Now you're in persistence land. Okay. Then you go, you know what? I'm going to prove them. Come on, I wish I had somebody. <laughs> Once you get to that point, it is now a manifestation. Two things you should understand about this. Let me back up real quick. And let me put it in relationships now. I got an idea. He act like everybody else. I wish I had somebody. I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to switch roles for a second by accident. I got, I got some. Oh, okay, okay. Hold, hold, hold on real quick. Now, you, he, he act just like everybody else. That's an idea, isn't it? But you also got emotion with it, don't you? And your purpose is to be right and not be in harmony. So guess what you manifest? Like him acting like everybody else. Okay, go ahead, whoever that was that was talking. That was me, Carol. Oh, hey, Carol. Hi. I had a conversation with my uncle um, who has been in, in, into all of this for years. He got me thinking about things when I was like 16, 17 and reading Carlos Castanetis and all that. So I brought up the subject about what I'm doing and how excited I was about it. 
and the creations that came to mind when I heard some stuff on your video um, the other time about, you know, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. and right away, his protective guard came up, even though Look at that. whole spiritual stuff going on. His protective guard came up and said, but honey, yep. you've got you to gotta really think about this because that, that takes a lot of time to do. And that takes a lot of, I said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, don't be giving me none of your negative stuff. I said, you put that into the ether. I said, don't I know that that's right. <laughs> so I had to tell him, don't create that for me. And please don't worry about me if you want support me through this mm -hmm. change your mindset and think about positive things for me. That's why I brought it up to, you know, talk to you about it to begin with. So sometimes when you do have this creative stuff going on, you got to be careful of what you listen to because it can change your mindset. As yes, well. it can and bring fear in and cause change. Yes, it and, can. Yes, and, it can. It all, you know, it, it would have happened to me, years ago, but at this point, I'm going for it. Uh, there I'm it going is. for it, that's it. <laughs> now, now watch this here. So right now, I've already, I've already shifted your thinking about Thing Girl Rich, when I ask everybody what you, what you think, what you know. Now you understand it's deeper than whatever you've ever read. This is why people like me and Phil read this book every chance we get. I was on the phone with Susan earlier, and she was saying, she read it every day. She, every day, she, she tried to go back and read it every day. I've read Think and Grow Rich, maybe eight times this month seriously Antonio, i have it Antonio, i have the think and grow rich app on my phone so Look I'm at the, you. i read a chapter every day it is every on day. my phone just download it and you can access it every day and when you meet people that read think and grow rich every day they they act like it oh yeah i missed it oh man yeah i missed it okay you when you meet people that are actually trained themselves to be positive, it's real hard for them to think negative. It's hard. You, you say something like, oh my God, I didn't mean to fit you. You'd be like, oh baby, I don't even think like that. Some of y'all don't even get it. Some of y'all don't even understand that arguments are not normal. If you, see, see this here? Arguments are not normal. That is not a way of life. That is very unnormal. It is. But if you think in order to be together, you have to argue, you are now shown your level of prosperity. Let me tell you why, ladies and gentlemen. Because everything's energy, right? Follow my logic. Follow this objective logic. Everything is energy. In your relationships, you believe arguing is normal. Relationship is energy. Arguing is energy. In your relationships, you believe argument is normal. You're in relationship with everything of energy in this world. And the reason you're broke is because your money argues with you like you argue in your relationship. <laughs> your money treats you like you treat people I wish I, wish I had somebody I wish I, I, I. your money you quit making sense. <laughs> <laughs> your money treats your money treats you like you treat people it's because everything's energy how you're in relationship with your kids is how you're in relationship with your dreams. Ooh, how you do anything is how you do everything. Sir. You're going to hear me say that often. Sir. Often. Sir. Well, Sir. I'm just saying. This Sir. Is some, some, Sir. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I don't know what y'all thought. What you not going to do? <laughs> I don't know what y'all thought y'all was going to do today. today. <laughs> y'all know who Antonio T. Smith Jr. is. There is no way you came to this class and thought that I was going to go, okay, chapter one, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. No, 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 no. no. You are in relationship. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> you're in relationship with money. Like you're in relationship with people. Like you're in, you have to be in relationship with prosperity. 
But the reason why you're in arguments, all the, if any of you argued one time today, you left the road to prosperity and went on the road to poverty. And those two roads don't go to the same place. If you had one argument today, you left the road. This is why successful couples will say, all right, now, now we argue. Let's kill that before we, before we go in here. You know, we, we getting along to date. You get it? This, this is a moment we had. We're done now. You finna love me in here. Super successful couples will get into an argument and say, you know what, babe? Let's just leave this room. That energy's in here. That's, that's why I tell you to get up and go. That's right. That's why I tell you to get up and go. Let, let's, let's just, let's just, there's too much, it's, We've planted what does not serve us in these seats. Next time you're in an argument and you're in a car, grab their hand. How are you going to argue and hold hands at the same time? Those two energies don't match. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So if I reach over and grab your hand, you're going to get your hand out of the way. Because you're trying to hold on to poverty. And that's what. Not, that's one of the things I'm going to get across to you. I'm going to get across to you very early. There is only prosperity or poverty. When I asked that trick question, I, I, I had to move you all forward. When I was talking about molestation, I had to move you forward. I said, let's make a 30. Because had I made her or, or him a child, we'd still be there right now. Let me tell you, we'd still be there. You, I, I took you too deep, and you wouldn't be able to follow me forward, okay? That's that. That's my speaker gift, knowing don't take people too deep in the story, okay? Don't, don't, don't take it too deep in the story. There is only prosperity. There is only poverty. Anything in between is a word that you made yourself comfortable with for poverty. That's right. That's it. That is it. If you use it, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm just comfortable. Really? I'm not comfortable. You would, you would just say, Grace just said, Grace just, Grace, Grace Sandals just said, <laughs> don't mute your mic and say what you just said, girl. If you say you are comfortable, uh, you, you, you can hear me? If you say you are comfortable, that is poverty on a payment plan. Well, I feel like throwing this whole book at you. She you didn't crush. <laughs> For real. Throw the book at my, at my name I've been talking for 90 minutes, and you did better with one sentence, and I did it 90 minutes. Ain't this something? <laughs> so, so, Jesus. I don't even know how to deal with that. Okay, I, don't even know, I, I, I can't follow that, so let's move on. I don't even know how to deal with that one. Woo, comfortable is poverty on a payment plan. Boy, I tell you. All right. What you should all be receiving now is you weren't as clear on prosperity as you thought you was. I knew that. Anybody that's clear on prosperity has one thing and two things in common. Are you ready? They live all their dreams. Yeah, you're going to take that. They live all their dreams. A wholeness. Successful doesn't mean you live your dreams. Come on, y'all. Success is not self-actualization. Success is not the highest expression of yourself. If you don't even know what success is for you, just because you're successful at a job doesn't mean you're happy. People who are all prosperity, they have two things in common. They are successful in every area of their life. Okay? Wholeness. The word integrity takes its root from whole, wholeness. You don't get to be a poor, righteous teacher. And I'm going to challenge all of you. Stop letting your, your religious establishments tell you poverty is holy. It is not. It is not holy. Whatever religion you're in. May, Talk may, about that for a minute, Reverend. Whatever religion you're in, may your deity bless you real well. But poverty is not holy. You do not have to be sad to be humble. You can have 
you can have all the confidence in the world and still be humble. These confidence and humility are not mutually exclusive. They're not. You've been taught that, but they're not. They have prosperity on all sides. You know what the second one is? Peace. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are living a truly prosperous life, you do not have to protect it. You should write that down. When you are living a truly prosperous life, you do not have to protect it. If you and your mate was actually prosperous, you wouldn't be so jealous. Oh, you're going to take this truth today. I got the floor. If you and your bank account was actually in harmony, you wouldn't be scared to check your online balance. <laughs> Grace, Grace had to shake my head. Just saying, I would do, I would do that though, bro. I, think about it. How many of you right now are scared to check your balance at the ATM when you take money out, or when you check it online? This whole time you thought that was normal. That's not normal. That's your poverty auto suggestion saying, "I'm afraid money is always running out." That is a thought mixed with, let me read, purpose persistent and a burning desire. And the reason why you are scared of checking your account balance is because you have mixed money is always running out. So guess what you manifest? Money always running out. This is how this works, okay? This is how this works. This is how this works. Let me let me call on someone. Let me roll with the energy. Oh, let me see. Let me roll with the energy. Who who is who is this nine one zero number? <clears throat> That's Curtis. Is that Curtis? Is that really Curtis? I think so. Can you talk? Is he in the background? Loud background. If you can talk, unmute your phone. You might be cooking some beans on the stove. Okay, we'll wait for him to unmute, unmute his phone. Okay, let's see. So I'll come back. Let's see. Who? Andrew. There you go. There you go. Unmute. Tell us, Andrew, what you have learned so far. Now, watch it. I'm going to preface it, though. Low level of awareness people won't answer the question. Low level of awareness people would take the moment to show how smart they are. All right. I, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot, man. Um, <laughs> I, I actually love the book, Think and Grow Rich, and you just took me into a, a whole other dynamic of it. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I can't tell you that I, I'm aware of, I, I was aware that our thoughts manifest, but I didn't realize of how deep our thoughts manifested yeah. and, and how quickly and, and how precise that they can manifest. That's good. That, that's something that I just picked up and it's, it's just like hitting me in my head like a ton of bullets. Come on, let's clap for it. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. That's a, you just saved yourself a lot of money, man. I'm telling you right now, a lot of money. Later on, you all, you all going to hear me tell you, I don't do anything I'm not willing to die for. But that's, that's later. It's coming. It is totally coming. But I want you all to just grasp in your awareness. One of the first things, I really set y'all up. I really did. One of the first things I told y'all on this phone call was intellect is not awareness. In this life, you will not get your intelligence. You will get your awareness. You should write that down. In this life, you will not get your intelligence. You will get your awareness. In this life, you will not get your intelligence. You will get your awareness. All of you know a million dollars exists, but your awareness can't find it. Talisa asked a question about 30 minutes ago. How do you grow out to money? Okay. How do you grow out to money? There's a lot of answers here. I will simplify it. 
to keep it very simple. The first thing you need to do to grow out to money is forget what you know about money. The mere fact that you, I am, I am convinced, I mean convinced, convinced, I am convinced that I would be a billionaire by 2020. I got the stage set, the, the stage set and everything. I am messing myself up, and I realize this today, because 2019 is in my head because I got all these big deals working out. I just left another deal I can't even talk about because I'm on the NDA. I, I, ju I just left one that is insanely lucrative. But guess what I just did, Andrew? I told my subconscious, I don't know which one to manifest. 2020, 2019. Okay. And go happen because I haven't made a definite decision. Come on, y'all gotta hear me. Y'all, y'all, y'all gotta hear me. Come on, come on. Say, look, look. Because I have not made a definite tonight. I'm gonna go. Hey, boy. I'm gonna talk this. I'm talking myself. You better decide on one of these. 2019, 2020. You better put a date on it. Okay. You, you, you better put a date on it. Because the universe can't give me a billion dollars in an unspecified date. Mm. Y'all not hear me. If I don't say December 31st, 2019 at 12.57 p.m. or something like that, then my subconscious can't collapse on the proton that will make that happen. That's a whole different conversation, but that's actually superposition to you look up Schrodinger's cat. That's actually hard quantum physics, okay? Right now, everything is in a waveform or entanglement, excuse me, superposition. Every, every opportunity exists in every place at the same time for me right now. But now, I'm wishy-washy on 2019, 2020. So guess what the universe is going to give me? Since I haven't made a decision, it's going to give me an abundance of not making a decision. Mm. If I ain't made that make sense to y'all. <coughs> <laughs> Tempest is like, look, I own 30% of what you do, so I'm going to need you to make a decision because you is messing with my money. That's what Tempest is saying right now. You, you, you can look, 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 look. You can't see it. Look at it. Look at it. Look, look at it. Look. It's right. They see it. They see it right there. Okay. All right. All right. Like, stop messing up my money. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Come on, Curtis. Okay. Hello. Hello. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Listen, I, I first want to say uh, this this kind of conversation you you I I really don't get uh, in a year's time at, at, at sometimes because of the people that sometimes I'm around. Uh, the level of conversation that this is bringing uh, has me on fire. Okay, and I'm very new to this, but the level of thinking, the level of conversation that you all are exerting right now, I fit right in. I cannot wait. So I was wanting to make comments a long time ago when you did kind of pull the, the rug from under us because I have a perspective on both sides of the fence with that, but I won't go into that right now. I'll stay with where we are. Um, I just, I, I really want to continue to listen. I don't, I, I speak very fluently and out and on things that I know about, but uh, right now, again, I'm listening and, for real, this is something that is so needed for me because the thing that you just said was being stuck in uh, no decision making. Um, the level of, of, of business that I'm attempting to do is so abound uh, past um, anyone that I'm around that I can't even speak about it. It does me no good. So I, it, 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 it continually fuels my fire to, to, to continue to meet people like you all, to, 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 to find the conversation, to find the thing that's going to lead me to, to, to getting that date that you, that you the, the harvest date that you so eloquently talked about. 
I, I am totally excited about being a millionaire, but I'm not chasing the money. The opportunity for me to do the things that I love to do and the things that I do every day already is 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 what I'm chasing. And I'll give it back to you, brother. Well, no, no, that's good. That's good. Do me a favor. Jump back to the thought that you had when you wanted to jump in earlier. You you got the floor. Wow. Okay. So so um I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about me. I was molested as a young man, uh, as a young, as a young man, around, i say about six or seven. Uh, the thing about that, I was molested by a, a, a guy, and then I was molested by a female babysitter. So, yep. so I was really confused. I didn't understand that I was even molested. I just thought that's, that's, you know, that's what you do when you go over somebody's house or, if you get left with somebody that's, that's like that. So what it did for me, uh, it, I question, I question anybody around me. So I became a mute. I didn't even speak. People thought something was wrong with me because I wouldn't talk, but I would just listen. But more than that, I realized as a young man that I was an energy person. I can read you before you say anything to me, just how you looking at me, just how you squaring up off of me and everything it didn't make me bitter because again i did not know that it was a bad thing the other friends that i was around they was getting molested by the same girl she would call her boyfriend while she was letting us do what we do we thought we was doing something not knowing that we're really getting molested because i'm too too small but what it did it turned me into a predator not a predator that I just wanted to get with everybody wow. or anything like that, but it turned me into, I could read that energy. If it was somebody that was inquisitive about it and I knew about it because I had it done to me, oh, I could fit that bill for you. And it was easy for me. It, it almost, it scared me because any female that I came up to and had that type of, I don't know, sensation about her, it seemed like she could possibly get with me. So I had to consciously decide that I was gonna use my powers for good. And even still, when I meet a female, a lot of times I could be very genuine in, in how I approach. I'll say something very nice. Hello, sister, how you doing? Or, or anything that I might say, but because it's the level of respect for that sister, because of what my mother told me to treat all women just like you would me until they, they show themselves not like me. Then you still respectfully get away from them. But you leave them with the thought that, dang, it is still some good men out here. So I grew up with the thought that I'm not supposed to be with all women. I'm actually Suppose allow them to come and gravitate to my energy. So it scared me. It scared me because I'm not a looker. I don't think that I'm all that great. I, I don't think, I, I think I'm, I look, I describe myself to women that don't know me as if you can think about Shrek's cousin, what he might look like. I say that jokingly because I do think I'm a little more dashing than that. But it's what's in me that I want you to see. Because, again, I try to use my powers for good. So to speak to what you were saying, I see things from both sides. I, I've, I've, I've seen, I've, I've even been a victim of being too nice to a sister, and she thinks I'm trying to hit on her. But I'm not. So I'm being victimized because she may be coming at me like I'm trying to hit on her, but I'm not. I'm just being nice. Hey, 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 how you doing, sis? I don't mean no harm, but I'm just, I'm being nice. But she hadn't had somebody be nice to her all week. I actually write a blog about that, what I'm talking about, and I call it armor. Being able to give, give of yourself, a piece of yourself that might cover someone that may be needing it for that day through a conversation, through a hug, through a handshake. Even I call myself an energy guy and I'll, I'll be quiet again. Okay.
<laughs> no, no, no. Something told me to let you talk. You just, yeah, nobody is. We, we, yeah, wonderful. Let's come be clap for Curtis. Can we clap for Curtis. Yes, 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 yes. Shannon, jump on in here. I forgot to tell you all. I have Tempest and Shannon. Tempest and Shannon. Uh, they, their awareness is so high, and they've been with me for a long time. They are, they are third and. <laughs> What, what year student are you, Shannon? What year student are you? Three. This is her third year, and you are – this is our fourth year? This is fourth year. But you typically has been with me for seven years, so that, 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 there you go. She's been getting beat up with me for seven years. Or beat up by me for seven years. Oh, seven years, 15 days. There we go. Just I'm going to call on Shannon, but I shall let you all know that I did decide on my date for billionaire July 20th, 2020. That's it. That's my day. I made my decision. <laughs> July 20th, Tim was just writing it down to help me call it into action. July 20th, 2020. The date is significant because it's also my birthday. Okay, Shannon, let's go. You can say, okay, say whatever the energy. One. Yeah, say whatever of the energy course. got for you. Hold on, Shannon. Go somewhere with reception. At, go somewhere with reception, Shannon. Okay, we'll wait for her to get to reception. Everyone that gave input has been brilliant. And really what stuck with me and w the way that I approached even this time is not that I'm an expert, but that I'm a new novice. And I have always said that I will be open. And so I can remember last year this conversation ate me up on the inside. We started off by talking about abuse. I too was abused. It was no way in hell I was gonna let Antonio make me believe that I bought that on myself. I mean, tip for tat, we went round for round. But now I have a totally new understanding and everything in my life has made an advancement by being connected to him, by taking this course and this book was absolutely integral to my progress. And so I'm glad you all are here. And like I said, everything's already been said. The energy has been amazing. And I can't wait to continue to grow with you all through this process. Absolutely amazing. Thank you very much, Shannon. Shannon and Tempest, will they, they helped me teach this class because their awareness is sky high. Let me take the last five minutes. I'm normally, about 98% of the time, I will always respect the time we started 14 minutes late today because of the reception or technical difficulties but we'll, we'll end in five minutes i want to read something to you and give you my closing thoughts <clears throat> it's on page two of this version of the book if you don't have it it's okay i'm going to read it to you it is the point the way i teach is i always have one place i want to go and that one place is what i'm going to challenge you with it's going to be happening every class i'm going to have one place and I let the conversation go all over the place, and I guide us through conversation to the one place. This is your challenge. You don't, you don't get challenges out of ceremony. You get challenges to work on your harvest. Okay? Here we go. This is about Edward C. Barnes, who becomes the only business partner with, I mean, Edwin C. Barnes, excuse me, only business partner with Thomas Edison. He presented himself at Mr. Edison's laboratory and announced he had come to go into business with the inventor. And speaking of the first meeting between them, years later, Mr. Edison said he stood there before me looking like an ordinary tramp. But there was something in his expression of his face which conveyed the impression that he was determined to get what he had come after. I had learned from years of experience with men that when a man really desires a thing so deeply that he is willing to stake his entire future on a single turn of the wheel in order to get it, he is sure to win. I gave him the opportunity he asked for because I saw he made up his mind to stand by until he succeeded. Subsequent events proved that no mistake was made. I get chills reading that because I have become that person. Let me challenge you. You're listening. 
but you haven't made a decision. <laughs> you you haven't made a decision to burn all your bridges, to be willing to die for it. You're scared to even approach Thomas Edison. You've rationalized. You know how many voicemails I get that people say, I know you don't have time, but you killed yourself by declaring how I don't have time for you. How many of you right now are treating your dream? I know I have, I know I want it, but you don't really have to give it to me because I'm not worthy of it. Edwin C. Barnes looked at a man that the world says is greater than him. And he said, I am your equal. He also said this. He said, I don't care where you start me. I, I, I just don't care. I don't care where you start me. I don't care how long it take. I will be your business partner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. I want you to listen to how there was no lack in his mind. There was no competition. Had he started in the mail room, he wouldn't worry about nobody else. He wouldn't have, wherever he started, he knew that's exactly where he was going to be at the end, a business partner. He didn't care where he started. Right now, most of you, in fact, I would say all of you, you care where you start because you got some ideal in your mind and you don't have the end in mind. So I challenge you. I challenge you. Be more like Edwin, Edwin C. Barnes. Please know you're going to get whatever the hell you want. And I don't mean whatever as in some ambiguous thing. I mean whatever you've decided, it is yours. And nobody, and I mean nobody, is going to stand in the way. Not your pastor preaching for or against you. Not your belief. Not your disbelief. Nothing can stop a man or woman that has decided this is what I'm going to get and I'm not going to do anything else until that thing comes into my reality. That's your challenge. You walk away from this phone call knowing one thing and one thing only, whatever it is that you're trying to go for. That's it. No backup plans. Backup plans say, subconscious, let me try and let me fall. No, no, not or I could fail. Let me fall on what I prepared myself to fall on. I challenge you. Look at it. Declare you will be what you desire. Let me pray for you. We thank you right now that we come. And we just honor you. We, we. Everybody listening right now, regardless of faith, and there's, there's many faiths on this phone right now, but not much belief. Uh, let their faith match their belief. Let their faith power them to their dreams. You have never put a dream in us that we cannot get, an idea in us we cannot achieve. We appreciate you, and we call ourselves, we call the experience of being the greatest expression of ourselves ever. If you receive it, ladies and gentlemen, will you say whatever it is you agree upon in your deity's name, amen for me, amen for me. Well, unmute, can you unmute everybody? <laughs> at the airport, y'all. See y'all see y'all next time. See you next time. <laughs> Thank y'all. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.
The world around us is smart. We think your education should be smart, too. With the FlexPath learning format from Capella University, you can set your own deadlines and leverage your experience to move forward at your pace. Visit capella.edu to learn more. Capella University. Don't just learn. Learn smarter. Winter can wreak havoc on your skin. Hey, it's Kayla, and it's not just the weather, but as a new mom, I've seen my skin change in ways that I'm not too happy about. But that's where the Skin Center has you covered. Their most popular treatment is Botox because they're the best at it. They've been ranked a top 10 provider in the nation by Allergan Aesthetics, the makers of Botox. And their best facial is what I got. It's the Hydra Facial. It exfoliates, extracts, and hydrates all at once. So save your skin from these winter blues and DM at the Skin Center MD on Instagram and mention code Kayla to get one $100 off your first Botox or filler treatment or any skincare package.